Hello guys, it's me again. One of my favorite tracks of the entire F1 race calendar coming up this weekend, Japan. A true classical one. Here I am in the rig, Japan, let's go! On to the main straight of one of the most technical circuits in the entire F1 race calendar, a classic one with no big run of area, no place to make errors here and absolutely insane g-forces. I can nearly feel it from my virtual cockpit. Turn 1 and 2, very tricky, braking while turning and accelerating straight away and we are on to the asses, fast direction changes, trying to avoid the curbs to not unsettle the car, Turn 7 is completely flat out and the first sector ends like this. Degner 1 and 2, one of the highest loaded corners in the entire F1 race calendar, using the camber on the exit and maximizing every millimeter of the track. A tricky braking zone, turning while braking, also a great overtaking opportunity if you have been insanely good following someone ahead closely in the first sector. A flat out part where drivers will choose many different lines, some try to keep it short, some try to carry high speed with a wide line. Spoon is an amazing corner, if you hit it right, I miss the apex a little bit on this lap, because it's all about keeping one steering angle and then optimizing with power and brakes where you end up being. 130R, sometimes there is too wide action here, a great overtaking opportunity, this braking zone as well, arriving to the chicane, the curves will really unsettle the car, but you have to fly through them, especially on a qualifying lap. You need to risk it to optimize it. And this was a lap of Japan. This was amazing. Now let's go back to the HQ and review it. Hi guys, here we are at the desk, analyzing the lap to see how you can improve. This is one of the hardest circuit around the F1 race calendar, a true classic one with not many runoff areas with grass and gravel on the outside. The fast lap starts with the corner before. You need to have a very good exit, minimal steering lock to not scrape away your speed, open up the DRS as soon as possible because you can start gaining valuable lap time down onto the start finish straight because there is a very long amount of straight before the first turn after the line. Turn 1 and 2 is really hard. You need to try to break in a straight line and then cut back to the second apex to open up the wheel as soon as possible, being back on full power. And now, the best part of the track comes up. Turn 3 to 7, amazing direction changes. The important thing is to avoid the curbs. You can touch them just a little bit, so they kinda stabilize your tires at the edge, but don't run over them with the part that you generate grip with very small lifts you don't need to use the brakes but be very fast on the pedals if needed because the car can step away from you at any minute this is a part where you need to be sharp you need to be fast every little delay that you have with your inputs it will cost you lap time the very end turn six is the longest right hander on this track you need to keep it quite tight to prepare for a flat out exit uphill. It needs to be flat out with these modern Formula 1 cars and this is how you end sector 1. Then Degner 1, it's a very small lift. The highest g-force of the whole track, more than 5. It has a little bit of a camber which helps, but there is grass on the outside which you absolutely cannot touch on the braking because there is no runoff area. As you can see, this braking is downhill as well, so be prepared so the car slows down a little bit slower than usual, but then you can use this camber to your advantage when turning in. This exit curb is very, very tricky. There is a very hard rumble strip area of it, but then there is a flat part, a very tiny, lighter green part which you can attack with your tires. If you go more over, more to the left, then you will bottom out. But you need to use every centimeter of the track because this is how you can carry the highest minimum speed. This is exactly what I did. And then comes 
one of the trickiest braking zones of the entire F1 calendar, the braking zone of the hairpin. You already want to start braking just as you finish turning, straighten out the wheel and try to aim for the little widening part of the track to really hit a late apex, to be able to straighten out the wheel as soon as possible, apply the throttle as precisely as you can because this is one of the most important exits of the track. You cannot use that outside curb. You see many real life drivers going very wide line here, but in the F1 game we need to keep it tight because this is how we complete the shortest distance possible and there is not enough friction on the tires while turning for us. Spoon, one of my favorite turns of the F1 calendar. The perfect way, if you take it, is to try to apply a very constant steering lock and basically balance out your turning with power and brakes. You try to send it in the corner as fast as possible, use every millimeter of the track on the outside. This curb is very much usable, you will not bottom out, but be mindful of the track limits. And then as you are slowing the car down, just to make it to the apex, but not hit the curb, you can be back on full power in fifth gear and use every millimeter of the exit curb as well. We don't have any DRS here, so it's an extra important exit. High drag, long flat out part. 130R is pretty simple with the Formula 1 cars, just keep it clean on the ideal racing line. And then, big braking zone. You need to start braking from the middle of the track to make a small swing for the car to load it in before you actually hit the curb of the chicane. By the time you hit it, you need to be in a stable position to be able to cleanly prepare for the last exit, which is really tricky because the car wants to go outside, the track leans towards the outside, but when you finish a lap, you need to keep it very tight. Again, just like after the hairpin before spoon, we want to complete the shortest distance possible. You can open the DRS just before the start finish line. It's really important to open it here fast because you can gain another 100 or maybe 200 of a second. And sometimes in Formula One, these are the gaps that define pole or P4 maybe. Thank you very much for watching guys. We will be doing these track guides for every single track. So make sure you follow our journey.